guys, it's Claris, and today we are going to do um, a tutorial on how to paint lemons uh, with the little florals and the leaves. And um, I've pre-drawn this, and you will find the download link to this scan um, in the description below. So please feel free to download that if you if your drawing skills aren't up to par and you just want to go ahead and just paint. Um, the brushes I will be using are going to be my squirrel mop brush in the one, my silver black velvet in the four, and the Princeton Neptune in the eight. For colors I will be using three different types of yellow. Um, well, the third one isn't quite a yellow. And they're all from the St. Petersburg White Knights line. So we have the cadmium yellow, sorry, cadmium lemon medium. We have the cadmium lemon. We have the yellow ochre. And then these two are greens, my favorite greens that I always like to tell you guys about, which is the I guess this one's called green and then this one is the umber from again St. Petersburg white knights and for the buds they're going to be a little purple so I have some pre-mixed purple on my palette I'll just be using some of that um, oh and I do need a little bit of black just for the florals that are going to be white so instead of you can either use a black or you can use azure which is kind of like a grayish dark very very dark teal so I, I think I might no I think I I think I like the combination of yellow or lemon with a gray and um, uh, and the green as opposed to the blue and the yellow so I mean, it's a preference thing. So if you feel like you want the um, blue, then yeah, use the Azure or a Payne's gray or something like that. Um, all right, so let's begin. To start off, I am going to start by doing the uh, painting in the lemons themselves. So I'm just going to use my a couple of different ways I could do this so I'm just going to put the green stuff aside and we'll start off with the painting the lemons first so making sure you guys can see me clearly I am going to use my uh, number eight in the Princeton to get the yellow in or down um, so I will first start off with this yellow right here I'm just going to get it right off this and I'm just going to paint it in. So I'm just spreading it all around. And I want to bunch most of the color to the edges and to the bottom. And then leaving on the inside like a little bit of, uh, what's the word, like white space. Then I'm going to take my squirrel mop brush and I'm just going to swish the color around and spread it around nicer, just dampen the area because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my um, darker yellow and just add a couple of hints. So I'm going to go in with the medium cadmium, cadmium lemon medium and I'm just going to add, I need more water. I'm just going to add it off to the sides to give it that shadowy effect. And then making sure I got water, I'm just going to try and blend that in nicely. And then off to the top as well just a little bit just a couple of strands here and there or strokes here and there all right so once I've done that I am going to take my 
number four and I'm just gonna get a little bit of water on it and I'm just gonna swipe down just in the middle a little bit to get an effect of like light hitting it so I'm just swiping away some of the color really so just like that and I'm literally pushing the color down to the bottom of it so once I've done that I am just going to add a few dabs of um, the yellow ochre just in a couple of spots again to kind of add a little bit of detail it has a little bit of a uh, texture to it so I'm just adding a couple of spots while it is still damp to kind of get that texture that the lemons normally have and when it dries up it's just going to be in that textured format which is what we want and it doesn't need to be all over it doesn't need to blend in with as a stroke but more of a dotted texture all right so i'm just gonna make sure i do that all over adding it at the top and then I'm just gonna let it go and let it be for now so all right we can do the same thing two more times uh, before I do that I'm just going to introduce the um, squirrel sorry not squirrel the silver black velvet in the eight and I just want to get a little bit of green happening so I'm just going to get some of that green onto my palette put it aside and I just want to have a hint of it the top of the lemon and just maybe a little bit at the bottom because this is where it kind of extends into the um, stem yeah, so I'm just gonna leave it at that all right, so then we're going to proceed and do the rest of these lemons in the exact same manner that I've been doing them. So firstly, we are doing the yellow. I'm just going to bring these in focus here so you can see it. So we're doing the yellow first, and we're just putting the strokes in, covering up the whole area, leaving a little bit of white space in the center. but otherwise laying it on quite nicely. Especially in the area where the leaf is over it so that it has that shadowy effect. All right, then once we have done that, I'm just going to take my squirrel mop brush and I'm getting some of the darker lemon. And I will add that here just around the area where the leaf is kind of overlapping and then bringing it down to the bottom and just adding it on this side as well and then you can just use um, use the number eight that we used with just water on it I'm just going to swish this around so it has a nicer blend so we're blending doing all that good stuff okay um, and then once that's done I'm just gonna dip this brush into the yellow ochre and I'm just gonna do my little dabs of ochre all around. It's still pretty damp, as you can see, but I don't mind it because all lemons are not made the same. So I'm okay if 
This lemon turns out slightly more texturized than the others. And see some of the areas have like, literally it's like dots on there. I don't mind that either, um, especially in the white space. I like that for additional texture. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. And I'm just gonna add some in this area too before we progress and let this one go. So, so yeah, so now that we have that, um, I just wanna do a tad bit more just to give it a little more texture just on the edge and here uh, for those who find you might be entering into the leaf just use a thinner brush you can use the number four um, or just a thinner brush so that you can ease easily get this in there without interfering with textures and whatnot sorry with the shapes and coloring outside the lines okay so we're moving on to the next one which is right here and for that again we're using the yellow or the lemon cadmium lemon and we're just going to paint it on the outside in. I think that's a good way to say it. And I'm having these touch so that we can get a little bit of the color blending happening. Um, so I'm just going to add a little more of that Le um, what, what is it? Yellow ochre in here with hopes that it's kind of going to blend in there. Give me a nice little blend. Yes, it is perfect. So I'm going to wash off my scroll mop brush and just like we've been doing with the other two, I'm taking my medium cadmium lemon and I'm going to add some around the edges. Pushing it towards the bottom, just adding a couple over here, but kind of trying to keep the um, white spaces happening. And then I'm just going to go in and add the little, oak, um, what's it called again? Uh, yellow ochre, yes, yellow ochre dots to kind of finalize on the texture. And yep. So I kind of like how it's kind of evolving where you have some of them blended in well, some of them have a little bit of a dry effect and it just adds a couple of different textures and looks and feels to this entire piece as a whole. Um, without it being too loose, but just also nicely detailed. It's like a good balance in between, I guess. So, all right. So leaving it at that, uh, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. I'm just gonna go in here and add a couple of little, textures using the yellow ochre and it's not completely dried up but it is still a little bit damp so it's kind of absorbing a little bit not quite a whole lot but I like that because again it's giving me this nice texture which I like so Let 
I'm just doing a little bit. Yeah, and I think I'll leave it at that. Maybe add a little bit of that yellow because I don't want it to look too brown. Then it might look like a spoiled lemon or something. All right. Just leave it at that. And then I'm just going back on these ones. And now that it's slightly drier, is that a word? I'm just going to add a little bit of the darker yellow ochre to the ends and edges. And just a little bit here where it is kind of pooling around the light light areas where the white is and I'm just going to leave it at that. So now finally we're just going to use a little bit of the green as I mentioned previously and just add it at the tips but it's still pretty pretty damp and so I'm not getting that lemony effect but this one's I think a good dampness that it's giving me giving me a little bit of a green bleed, which I like. Could probably intensify it as well. Yeah. So now here's the fun part for the greenery. I'm just going to add, I'm mixing the ochre and the green, and I'm just going to add, I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm just, uh, I just added water to the tip of my brush. And just extending it up. And then same thing all around. We'll just do that. And pull the color up if you feel like it's seeping into the lemon right away. This way it won't wholly blend in with your lemon and give it like a dirty look. Just gonna cheat and do this for a bit because sometimes when you let it go it blends in or you could just take your paper towel and just dab ever so slightly and lightly just to make sure that the pooling water doesn't get to it so there we go leaving it at that um yeah so we can now go into the the leaves and leave the flowers for the end. So for the leaves, I'm just going to first water them down and then I'll go in with my green and I'm just laying down the green first and I'm pushing the color to the bottom of the stem. And then I'm just dipping in, let me put these in the front so you can see those, some of my umber and I'm getting that on the other side of the leaf. And this way they blend in nicely. I'm pushing all the color down. Um, same thing. We're going to continue throughout, so watering down this leaf. So these two overlap a bit, so I'm just going to put the water in very loosely and then I'll take the dark green first and just lay it down. And I want it to be so because I just put the water in the middle and I'm starting to paint it from the edge, you see how it's giving me a nice fade in the middle? And then I'm just pulling it down to curve. And now when I add my green in the center here, it's just going to 
have that same fading effect happening. So I'm mixing, I'm mixing the green with the umber to kind of get variations of it in my leaf. So I will leave that to you in how you want to maneuver that. But literally I'm just using the two variations and where they overlap with another leaf or so, I am just making sure that it's darker. And that's it. And now once that is done, we're moving on to the next leaf. And so for this one, I think I'll just use the main. First, let me add a little bit of water. I'll just use the dark green just so it stands out from the leaf beside it. So so clearly this is not a very loose painting at all since I am being very specific about where I am putting my color and I don't want it bleeding too much. I want it to be like a nice Um, the, I want the edges to be a lot sharper than I normally would in most of my paintings. So, yep, this is a little bit different. The only thing that remains is the edge, always push the color down and yeah, always just put the, push the color down to the end or to the tip. Gonna add a twig there. All right, great. So moving on, we move on to the next leaf. Um, I'll do this one here. And again, I'm just filling the water in the center first. So let's start with mixing some of that with the umber. And I'm just gonna start off by outlining the leaf. giving it a nice pointed tip and then I'm bringing it back up and then pushing it back down. There we go. Some of you might like this little effect happening in the center and you want to leave it, um, leave that happening. Totally your call because you could Let's just see how that works out. I'm just going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this white stuff happening here and let's see how it looks in the end. If it doesn't look as great, then I can always, I can always um, fill it back in with paint. But for now, let's just leave it as is. I'll just add some water here so that it blends a little. All right, so going on to the next few, and we're almost done. All right, so doing this, same thing, starting from the tip, or the top rather, the tip is at the bottom. We're just gonna lay down the color this one I'm actually painting it in fully. I'm gonna add more of the brown here. Leave a little bit of white space in between the two. Using the tip of my number four to make sure that it doesn't touch too much of the edge. Or go outside the edge, I mean. There we go. And then finally, for the overlapping, I'm just going to leave a very tiny bit of white space between this portion and that. And I'm going to paint this in more of the brown than the green. Uh, 
and let's see how that pans out. I'm going to add some of the green here and have it flare up. All right, there we go. So now three more leaves and let's then we can move on to the flowers which should be really quick so again we are doing the center first and i will start off with using a darker like the umber with the green for this end just because it is right below another leaf And then I'll go mainly green on this end, although I, this looks a lot darker than that. So I just dipped my brush in water to kind of loosen the color so it doesn't come on as thick and dark. And I kind of like, again, I like this effect that is happening, which is almost like a cloud of color just infiltrating. I'm just adding the darker color here so that it can get in overlapping there. Moving all the dark color to the bottom. All right, so then going on to the next one. Again, I am just doing the center, I'm wetting the center and then I'm going to go in with my brush and lay down the color, lay down the law for these leaves. Yeah. And then doing it on the other side. And I'm just going to use some water to bring down the rest of the color and smush it all in the tip of the leaf and have some coming down this way too just give it a little bit of texture whatnot all right i'm just trying to make sure these are not damp still so i can create the stem not bad although you could use a brown for the stem I'm just gonna use the green all right last and final leaf and we can do the florals just painting in the center and I am going to add a nice swoosh to the edge and love seeing that nice flare of green so nice um, then I'm going to actually add a little bit of the the umber just so there's a definition between the two leaves just adding Some of that here and then finally making it go meet the other leaves at the top of the stem all right so now we have these now we can kind of wash this brush to get some of the grays and then we can do the florals so for the flowers they have brown centers, so we'll do the brown at the very end. But I'm just gonna take some of the black, which is right here, and I'm just gonna mix some over here because I want a very tad, small amount of the black or gray. So the way I will do tackle this bit is by taking my number eight 
and again adding water to the petals and then going in and adding some of the black which is well like a really watered down black so it's gray all right so i'm just going to add some water leaving a lot of white space so i'm adding water um, pretty much kind of like um, outlining the florals the petals and they all touch because what i am going to do is i want to try kind of like what i've been doing with the radiant colors just kind of adding a bit of water where it's damp and having it spread out and do the work without me having to kind of go in and paint it all in especially because these florals are supposed to be just so light and white they're barely there should barely be any color so I kind of like the effect that it's done I think it works um, it's just in certain areas like over here at the tip I think you could go and intensify it just so that it stands out more um, same thing at the tip here just certain areas if you feel because remember right now you can see it because I have a um, I have a pencil drawing so you can see it but outside of the pencil drawing you're probably not going to be able to see it so just keep that in mind so again I'm just adding a couple of things of water and once that's done I'm just going to go in get some of the gray and add it just at the tips if you feel like you've you've put in too much gray just take your paper towel and dab and that should fix the problem so don't be alarmed same thing with this one here this one here is a special one because it's kind of curvy so I'm just kind of going in the center for this and let's just do this and see okay didn't quite work but it's okay I will just extend it this way and then swoosh it in the other direction same thing here always bringing it back to the center all right and then I'm just gonna dab some off and then finally I just want the bottom ones to be super prominent like this is where it's turning over so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it fully in with the gray maybe even like a tad darker than the others with the tips yeah no this one's dried all right so I will let that dry for a bit before getting back to it but in the meantime we can also do the purple buds that we have happening here so I just used the gray that I had and applied the water I'm just gonna go in and add some purple and you can use yeah it's like a nice pretty purple I find that it's it looks really cute against the the yellow so again you can lay these on any which way you like in the sense that you can put the water first and then go in with your brush and add the purple or put the color first and then go in with your brush and add the water so you decide i'm just trying to get rid of some of the excess water and yep so here's another one at this point I'm literally just painting it in coloring it in and what I will do is take some of the purple and just 
dab at the center at the bottom sorry and try and give it like a nice flare so it looks like it's from dark to light same thing here oh and there's one here almost missed this one Yep, I think I got them all. Yes, and so now we can do the green. And we're almost done. All right, so for the green again, we can use a combination of the greens I've been using already. So let's start off with this one right here. I gave it a green bottom, so I'm giving, I'm leaving like a bit of a white space in between the areas where they intersect. And what I'm doing is where the, where they intersect, I'm also going in with a darker green and just giving it a bit of a shadowy kind of look so that you can tell where things meet and such. And this is literally just so that they don't look like one big blob of green. You don't know where things are going or ending. Intersecting rather, yeah. There we go. So we have that one and then we have this one here. And I'm just touching up some of them ever so lightly. And then finally, these little buds can have some nice green attachments to them. Or you can kind of leave them loose. Um, the ones that are out, the ones that are in too, maybe a little bit like these, like that one. But I feel like if you give them this, like these three here, it gives you almost like a whoosh kind of effect coming out. So just gonna highlight these so that they're darker at the tips because trust me when they when they dry, it won't be as dark. Sometimes they dry up looking very one tone. So just trying to make sure that we get a nicer effect. And then finally this one. And just extending it down. And up into this purple one. There we go. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. So I'm just touching these up. So touch them up wherever you feel like they need touching up and in the meantime the rest of the florals should be drier so we can go into the center and add our little um, brown for it and that should be good and then we really are done. All right okay so this is what we have. Now, these have the veins and stuff in the leaves, so if you wanna add them in, you totally can. I kind of like how this is happening here because it's detailed, but a little bit loose. We have some white space, whatnot happening. So I might end up just kind of leaving this as is. But um, yeah, let's do the centers. 
So the centers are just going to be like little brown lines with dots on them. So I'm just going to use the ochre that I have. And I'm pretty sure it's quite dry by now. So we can avail of that. So I think the one that you can see the lines up straight would be this one here. Let me just make sure. Yes. So I'm just going to do a couple of lines. Very dry. And just adding the little dots. Points on them. And then leaving it. Okay, I lied. I didn't leave it. Going back into this one, and we are just going to do a couple of them that look like this. I'm just going to add here we go and leave it at that okay so this is my lemon floral tutorial guys I hope you guys have enjoyed this let me know in the comments what you thought um, if you found this tutorial helpful please guys um, share it on your social media channels it really does help my channel grow and I really appreciate all the support. Um, what else? Yes, if you have done this and you want to send me what yours looks like, I would love to see it. So please do send it to me on either Instagram or Facebook. Follow me there. Interact with me. Ask me any questions if you have any. I love hearing from you guys. So inspirational. Um, so yeah, thanks so much, guys. And we will chat soon. Bye.